I, I would like to talk with one final issue here about um, ransomware uh, and uh, something that we've seen that I think is going to uh, be somewhat of a game changing event that we've talked about in the past. And that's the uh, repurposing of our evils ransomware uh, by third parties out there. Um, so as we know, uh, there have been a number of attacks. Uh, our evil um, has built literally a ransomware as a service offering uh, out there uh, in the uh, dark web where uh, organizations can literally you know, pay to use ransomware's uh, resources, their software, their payment systems, uh, even help targeting and accessing uh, potential threats or uh, potential organizations out there. Um, that was the same thing that um, we saw with the uh, most recent attack on the Colonial Pipeline. That was an offshoot of that uh, particular group. Uh, but now we've seen something that is probably even more disconcerting here. It's not just another ransomware as a service program out there. And before I get into that, let me just say that our evil and uh, uh, the, the more recent uh, dark shadow, dark shadow, dark, dark side, dark, dark side. no dark. I think it's dark. I'm trying a blank on that for whatever reason. <laughs> the uh, the colonial pipeline hackers who disbanded after the government, uh, you know, seized right. some of their assets and recovered some of the, the money. Um, that particular organization liked to think of themselves as ethical ransomware hackers, uh, you know, only trying to target organizations that didn't put people's lives at risk. Okay, it, so it where is, we, it uh, is dark side, by the way. It's a dark side. Okay, um, I keep confusing that with far side. Every time I hear dark side, I want to think far side and the <laughs> comic strip. Um, so, in, in any event, um, one of the concerns that we've spoken about in the past is what happens when somebody uses ransomware software, for lack of a better phrase, unethically, uh, or uses it to not actually extract ransom money, but simply to disrupt. That's a very dangerous thing. And we're starting to see the beginning of that uh, with a new group called LV um, that apparently has repurposed our evils ransomware software. And when I say repurposed here, it looks like what they've done, uh, according to uh, SecureWorks uh, and some really good investigation uh, work they did there, it looks like this group has literally hijacked the our evil software, changed a few pieces of code to allow it to operate independently. And the risk here is that what you see happening is the same technology that we use to protect our networks is now you know, obviously being used to you know, infiltrate networks. The ransomware tools that are being used are now being repurposed and used by others that may lack, I don't know, ethics, discipline. I'm not sure that the right way to put it, but <laughs> think of it this way. Once that software stack is out there and it goes onto the dark web and anybody can access it. Right. The number of people that are going to be locking down organizations' data is scary. Uh, so this is something that uh, I think we really need to start thinking a little bit more about this. And organizations need to be thinking about what happens when that ransomware attack is really not a ransom attack. It's more a disrupt or shut down attack uh, for these organizations. Uh, that puts uh, situations uh, like the, the meatpacking company, like Colonial Pipeline, in a very different mode because right. there's no ransom that you can pay to turn things back on very quickly. Right. And again, with this, kind of, um, uh, with this kind of a shift here, it opens up the risk to people who are more thinking of things on a political level uh, to have access to these tools on a broader scale. Absolutely. So a, something it, to think about. You know, I have so much respect for CISOs and really anyone involved, you know, in the cybersecurity operations of a business of any kind, because it has got to be absolutely one of the most stressful jobs that there is. And again, I mentioned, you know, it's like playing whack-a-mole, right? And, you know, you think you've got everything <laughs> taken care of. And then yeah. um, anyway, it, it is, uh, it's really interesting. And you know, it's funny, I think about you talking about ethical hackers. It really is very difficult to think about any of these groups in any way behaving in an ethical manner because that's not really, you know, that's not really yeah. what they're in it for. You know, they're either, you know, they're either nation state 
um, threat actors that are trying to get access on behalf of China or Russia or North Korea, you know, or, um, you know, they're people who are trying to make money and uh, or they're people who just want to get in and blow things up like we saw earlier in our mm-hmm. conversation. So um, I, I just don't think that this is a, a profession as a whole that is driven in any way by ethics. No, I mean, you know, that's kind of like calling organized crime um, ethical because they have rules. <laughs> right. Or compassion. <laughs> yeah, or compassion. Yeah. You know, yeah, and dark yeah. side, I mean, they have tried, they have uh, donated substantial amounts of money from the money they have, you know, uh, you know, ransomed and extorted from others, um, you know, to charitable causes. And those charitable causes, you know, are, are returning it right back. Going, we don't want your Bitcoin. Yeah. That thank doesn't, you. No, thank it you. doesn't make you good. You're doing it. it does not make you good. You're not Robin Hood, um, you know, so get over that. Um, but, you know, it is interesting that even here, this uh, this new group, LV, one of the components uh, that, um, uh, that SecureWorks identified of this was uh, a couple of sites where uh, it looked like what they were intending to do or, or doing at this point is actually posting data to shame their victims into paying. So, you know, it's a, um, it's just ugly. It's just ugly no matter how you look at it.